Okay, ladies, today, before I get started on the Bible study, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of our beautiful flowers and things that were growing outside in the garden. So I'm just going to go ahead real quickly and show it to you. Okay, I also wanted to show you, you know, I like to show you little things that I've bought in the past or whatever to give you some ideas or just to have fun. Here, this is something that I really bought. I bought this at, um, see if you can get this. It's just like a throw blanket over your, your, your couch or your sofa. And it kind of goes with my, you know, my decor or whatever, farmhouse or whatever you have house. <laughs> so. Anyway, so I thought I got this. I think it was just like twenty dollars at, at Home Goods, and boy, if if you know Home Goods, it's that's a dangerous place to go. And it's I mean, there's so many beautiful things in there. But um, I just wanted to show that with you. So now we're going to get into the Bible study. So I want you to picture you go into this room, right? And there's trophies all over the place. And uh, I don't know, people still do trophies, but I guess they do. But anyway, you go into a room and there's trophies for one first prize in baseball, one uh, honorable mention in crafting or crocheting or whatever, you know, uh, or any, all these things. So you have, and then we, another thing we have is Memorial Day. Why do we celebrate Memorial Day? To remember those who have fought for our country and then we have all these other different days. And why do we have that to, that we would remember and that we wouldn't forget? Well, today's lesson is called Stones of Remembrance. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 9, and it says, Only take heed to thyself, keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thine heart all the days of thy life, but teach them to thy sons and to thy sons' sons. And so the Lord is telling them, okay, we, I want you to have these stones in remembrance of what I have done for you so that the people do not forget that I brought them out of Egypt, that I provided for them. I provided all these things because otherwise we forget, right? All right. So, and that many times is, is we all do it. Because, you know, we get on this, you know, something wonderful happened, the Lord provided something, and we just kind of get excited. And then after a week or two, it just, you know, we all admit it, we forget, we take for granted, we, we just assume, and all these different things. And before we know it, just pride um, creeps in. And we think it's ourself, and it's not us, and we know that. We know that it's the Lord. Okay, I'm going to go back a little bit. Now, God uh, put in Joshua's heart to remind the Israelites to build, a, to have stones to remind them of the goodness of God and what he had done for the Israelites. So, uh, and why? Because we are all prone to forget things and forget things in life and forget that God is the one only true source where all things come from it's easy to think you're on your own that you you know well you know i work hard and well this and, and yes you do but we're who gives you the strength to work and if your mind is not in the word of god you will literally think well me you know i it's it's all me but if you are under the submission and the alignment of the lord because he blesses when we are under his alignment First, it's God. Then we are to be under authority, whoever that may be, whether it's a husband, if you're single, you're, you know, it's God. And if you're working still under your parents or whatever the situation may be, whatever you're doing, as long as you're under God and you're under the alignment, the authority where you're supposed to be and you're doing what God asks you to do. Yes, I know we're not perfect. But our mindset is to please him in all we do. And 
when we are seeking to do that, I can promise you, you will not have this head of thinking, well, you know, I did this and I did that. If it is, examine your life because you may have an issue with pride. It's easy to think how you went from something, from nothing to something and that it's you. If any man think he stand, take heed lest he fall. So God wants us to walk by faith, total dependence upon him. Remember he, Hebrews eleven six. without faith, it's impossible to please God for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So uh, don't forget that the Lord has walked with you and he has never left you. If you've been saved for a long period of time, or if you just got saved last month, you know that he has never, ever left your side. Even when you were in rebellion, when you thought you didn't need him, when you were angry at him or someone else, he was still there. He never left you. And he wants us to remember this, that he is the all omnipotent, omnipresent God, but he is also a God. He's a jealous God. And he wants us to know, to remind ourselves that he is the only true source where all wealth comes from as well. Okay, I am reading from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 11 through 18. And it says, Beware lest thou forget the Lord thy God is not in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and you're full and you have built godly, beautiful homes and everything, and you think, oh, you know, you forget that where God has brought you from. And, you know, yes, you worked hard for it. Yes. But who gave you, who opened those doors, who provided the health to help you to work? Everything we have comes from the Lord. And if we have that meek spirit, you will grow spiritually. But if you have this hardened attitude, it's going to hinder you. And it is a lie of Satan. So beware of that. Beware of that. Um, verse 13 in Deuteronomy chapter 8. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and gold is multiplied, verse 14, then thine heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, for, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, <clears throat> excuse me, from the house of bondage, who led thee through great and terrible wildernesses, who opened the Red Sea and on dry land. Think of that. He opened the Red Sea on dry land. It wasn't wet. He knew what had to, the Israelites had to go through that. Dry land. He's an almighty God, isn't he? He's all powerful. Verse 17, and thou say in thine heart, my power and my might of mine hath gotten me this wealth. But thou, verse 18, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. And it shall be found if thou shalt do it all, forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods. And it shall be that if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, and you think, oh, I would never worship a god. People, an idol can be your job, another person, uh, your friends, something, you know, whatever. It Anything that takes the place of God is an idol. So, and you know, in our days, don't think it's just a statue. No, it's something that you have put in front of God. All right. So I testify against you this day that ye be surely, that you will perish. God says, if you put me before somebody, if you put somebody else before me, you will perish. You won't have peace in your heart. You'll keep searching and searching and what's missing and, and, it's, it's the Lord. He's not center of your life. And that's why God wants us to remember things. He wants us to make sure we keep him in remembrance. So another way we keep him in remembrance is when the times come, when it's time to testify of him, don't be ashamed. Whether it's to your family, whether it's to coworkers, friends, 
whomever it may be, you let them know, you show them, this is my testimony. And a lot of times we think, you hear people's testimonies, you think, I wish I had some a testimony like that. I wish I had, we all have one. It all depends. Are we allowing him to work in our lives? Are we surrendering our life, our everything we have, our money, our our life, our entertainment, whatever? Are we surrendering in that to the Lord? Or are we like, okay, Lord, you know, I surrender my life to you, but don't you dare take this. You can't have this. You know, we're all human. Da, da, da. They're lies. They're lies. So if we can just remember that he is the source of all things. Let's remember that. When blessings come and we have opportunities to share with others what Christ has done, let's do it. You have a wonderful day. I love you and enjoy the spring. I know everybody's got, well, I'm here in San Antonio, Texas. I know some people have it cold and snow, you know, but we're having it really nice today. And I just, spring is a beautiful time. It's new life, new beginnings. And every day, is a new day. His mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Keep your eyes on Jesus and remember to just focus on him and he is your only source.